Hey, good evening. It's Pastor Mary. Uh, it is Tuesday. It is September 29th. My friend Janet's birthday tonight. And uh, happy birthday, Janet. I don't know if you'll see this or not. I know you work this evening. But we wish you a wonderful happy birthday. Uh, good to be with you all. If you are not here in Georgia, uh, I don't know how your weather is. We are quite cold here. Good evening, Bill. How are you? Uh, we are chilly for us. It's been rainy, been cold. I wore long sleeves today. We have a, hey, good evening, Laura. We have a whole thing in our family with Christopher. He loves to wear long sleeves. He loves to wear long pants. So a few years ago, we made a deal with him that he could wear one or the other in the summer. So he wears long pants, long, like leisure, athletic pants, and a short sleeve shirt in the summer. When he goes to bed at night in the summer, he wears a long sleeve shirt. But usually in November, he gets to start to wear uh, long sleeve shirts during the day with his long pants. And then he switches to short sleeve shirts at night. Now, me, I get cold enough, I gotta wear a long sleeve all the time, morning and night. So, uh, we'll see, he may get to wear some. Um, tomorrow's supposed to be nice here. It's supposed to be, I think, uh, around 80. So we'll see. Good evening, Sue. Um, so anyway, but Christopher's been back at school the last two days. So is Sam. Um, oh, in the 40s at night, Laura. You know, I'm sure we're, I think we're in the 50s tonight. Because we, we, I don't think we even hit 60 today. We were like, the high was like 59, 60. So I would guess we are too, but I'll have to check the weather tonight. But so anyway, but so Sam goes to school Monday and Tuesday in the morning. Um, and he gets out at 11 because he's taking two classes, uh, what's called dual enrollment. He's got two college classes that he gets college credit for. Good evening, Phyllis. And he also gets, um, he gets high school credit for too. Good evening, Sh Sherry. Um, it was good to see everyone Sunday. Um, so he only goes Monday, Tuesday to school. Wednesday is kind of, they have to sign in, but they have to catch up. Uh, it's a catch up day. Friday was catch up day when they were doing it all at home. And then Thursday, Friday, he does classes at home. So, um, this is their first week back. Uh, tomorrow I go for training, uh, to be an election judge. We'll see if they're going to use me or not. Um, I was an election judge for eight years in Illinois, and um, so I'd been meaning to volunteer here, so I got everything in, and they they are sending me to election judge school just about less than 10 minutes from my house, and I don't have a place to serve yet, but they I will be trained so that if they need me, they can put me in and... Um, the machines they're using here are very similar to the ones, good evening, Deb, good evening, Sandra, uh, are very similar, and Phyllis, good evening to you, are um, very familiar to me, and um, so I'm hoping I can help. Uh, I have been, a, like I said, my mom was an election judge all of my growing up, and um, my mom was a real uh, volunteer, really made a difference in the community, um, she always gave blood. I started giving blood when, when I was 18 because of my mom, uh, showing me how to do, you know, what my mom walked the walk. She didn't just talk the talk. She walked the walk. And so she taught me a lot by how she lived her life. And, um, so anyway, um, I'm very grateful for that. So good evening, Betty, Sandra, and Janet. Good to have you with us tonight. I was just talking about the weather a little bit. And Christopher is doing great. He has very small classes and about half of his class is staying home. So there's four kids uh, in his class. I'm sorry, my nose. This is the hard part of doing this. My nose is looking really weird. I don't know what's going on. Um, I had had um, uh, surgery on my nose. I had a, I always say the wrong cell. I had a cancer cell on my nose and several years ago they had to do surgery on it so it's made it a little wonky to look at it normally I don't notice it but now I'm like looking up my nose which is weird but anyway so forgive me for that I'm just like what is wrong with my nose it looks so weird so um 
And the Gospel Sunday was about um, and Pastor Patty Axel, who came to install me, brought the brought the good word, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I, I find that an interesting gospel because it's basically the parable where Jesus says that the landowner asks his two sons to go work in the fields, and the one son says no, and he goes and does it, but the other one says yes, but they never go. And Jesus says, which one did the will of the Father? And the will of the Father was not the one who said yes and didn't do it. It was the one who said no and then went and served. And so for me, it's always a reminder that it doesn't matter your talk. It's how you walk. It's how you live your life. It's the way you spend your time. It's the way you, I always say, um, you can tell a lot about a person and what matters to them by how they spend their money and how they spend their time. Good evening, Sharon. And you can look, even if you don't tell anybody else, if you look at your checkbook or your debit statement, if you look at look at your day, how you spend your time, you'll be able to tell what matters to you by what you do or who you talk to or who you spend time with. So um, it's, it's just a reminder to all of us, you know. Um, I, I think that gospel lesson is really an interesting one because... Um, there's plenty of times where our kids or us may have said, well, no, I don't want to do that. But then we start to think about it, you know, and it, I don't know about your parents, but my parents were such that, you know, you knew what you had to do and you did it. And there was no messing around about it. And I mean, I, I would occasionally be sassy. I will, I will admit that. Um, and I got in trouble for it. Um, but I learned to mind my manners and mind other people. And, you know, I just learned, hey, you can grumble all you want, but you still have a role in this family and you have a responsibility. And I think that's really important that kids, kids need responsibility. They need to learn what's expected of them and that every family needs kids help because they're part of the family too. And um, God needs us too. God's counting on us. God is asking us to use our hands, our feet, our voice, not for our political parties, and I'm saying that to everybody, but to God's love and care. We can disagree with our neighbor, but how are we going to show love to our neighbor? Jesus doesn't say, love all those who think the same way you do. Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. And I just feel like we're living in a really difficult time, and people have gotten more, it's gotten more difficult. So, I just pray for the best, and I pray that we remember that we love each other, even when we don't agree about everything. All right, my iPad has been giving me trouble, hasn't charged very well. I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to go ahead and read this. I may have to run out and plug it in so I can finish, but I'm going to go ahead and read this um, that I had picked out for tonight. So, um, let's see. Everything okay, my dad said. From behind me, I was digging through a small closet upstairs in the hallway next to my parents' bedroom. I scraped my finger, I said. I wasn't sure where you kept the band-aids, but just found them, I said, holding up the small box. My dad shook his head. Those are cheap, he said. I have better ones in the bathroom. I followed him where he opened a drawer stuffed with a variety of sizes of them. He started to unwrap one. Dad, I could put it on myself, I said. It's not that bad. Hold out your hand, he said. He hovered the bandage over my wound, caref carefully aligning it. His concentration was strong. I felt like his little girl again. Just like a daydream, these minutes became fragile, as if the scene could fall away at any second. I sensed that Jesus wanted me to pay attention to the way my father's fingers felt as they wrapped the band-aid around my finger, gently, lovingly, securely. He wanted me to think about how much joy this moment was bringing my father, being able to take care of his 32-year-old daughter as though she were six years old again. Then Jesus planted these words in my heart. Now imagine how your Father in Heaven feels when you let him care for you. It's God's nature to help you, but you must learn to let him just as you let your Father today. And the prayer is, Father, the older I get, the more I try to fix things my, by myself. But it's your desire for me to be, for me to experience all of your character and to receive your sweet fatherly qualities, even in seemingly minor situations, written by Desiree Cole. And the scripture 
from Isaiah 46, 4. I am your God and will take care of you until you are old and your hair is gray. I made you and will care for you. I will give you help and rescue you. So anyone who's struggling tonight, anyone who may not be feeling God's love, anyone who's having a disagreement with someone, anyone who maybe is upset or mad or had a bad day, and believe me, I feel like I've hit my wall the last day or two just with stuff. Um, but I'm doing, I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. And some days, the best we can say is we're hanging in there. But let this be a reminder to you and to I that God cares about us. God is with us. God loves us. And God will see us through whatever we're going through. So I would just want to lift up uh, real quick because I'm afraid this is going to run out. I want to lift up my cousin, Laura, who's still looking for a job and pray that there will be something that is right for her and that it will come soon um, just for the needs that she has. I want to pray for my nieces, Katie, and and um, I want to also um, Amanda, who are both pregnant and are due, and also for friend Maggie Jackson, who they're all due soon. Well, Maggie's due anytime she's overdue. And also, uh, our nieces are due in October, and so we're praying for their babies. All their babies will be healthy, and that the moms will do well, that they'll avoid getting sick from anything that's going on, and we just pray for the best possible outcome for them. I also want to continue to pray for my friend Becky's brother-in-law, who's 43 years old, was in good health, and has been seriously ill and in ICU in Springfield, Illinois with COVID-19. For those who don't think it's real, here's the only thing I want you to remember. God calls us to love our neighbor. We don't know who or what or how it can be carried. So we are called to care for each other, to love each other, to watch out for each other. And it's not too much to ask to wear your mask, to keep your distance. Um, I don't think it's any of you watching, but we just need to be aware that when we're around each other, like at worship, we need to not try to hug other people because they may feel uncomfortable and may not want to say no to us. But some people have been made to feel that their space is not being honored. And um, I don't say that to be mean, but to say, I get it. We miss each other. We want to be around each other. But we really, really need to think about the other person and bump elbows or bow or say peace, but we need to honor each other's space and be sensitive to other people. That's how we show our love. It was great to be together on Sunday. It was a wonderful day. I loved all of it. Thank you all for making it a special, special installation. It was my great joy to be able to bring you all communion and to see your lovely faces. Um, we will have outdoor worship this Sunday at 11 o'clock. Or 10 o'clock, sorry, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. We are moving uh, drive through communion to 1130 to 1215 because we just had a few come. But we will still offer it for those who don't feel comfortable coming or can't come. So please know that will still be available. Um, I also want to mention we're going to do a Zoom tomorrow night. I'm going to send it out tonight, hopefully, the directions. You sign on to the Zoom tomorrow night for the devotions, and then it will be check-in. Uh, for anybody watching who's not close by, please send me your email and I will send you the link for the Zoom because we want you to join us too. It will be at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, hopefully I can record it and share it, um, but we're going to try it out tomorrow night. We'll have devotions just like we're having now. You'll get to watch. If you want to sign off after the devotions are over, that's fine, but you're also welcome to stay and to check in and to share how you're doing. So I hope that you'll be able to join us. We're going to try it out. We're also going to discuss whether we can have a Zoom copy hour on Sunday. Gail's still available. I'd still love to have her do it. But because of us moving things, we need to look at another time. That's why we're offering Wednesday night. But things are flexible and movable. There's always plan B, plan C, plan D. So please come and share if you'd like to be part of it and what you'd like to do. After... Things get going. We've got some things coming up with stewardship, with October, with um, hopefully a fall fellowship event where we can be safe but share 
that fall fellowship time together. Um, I hope to be offer able to offer a book group reading the Desmond Tutu, Desmond Tutu book, Bishop Desmond Tutu, the book, The Art of Forgiving. But that is not set yet. Some of you have told me you'd be interested in being a part of that. If you think you'd be interested, please let me know. And I will get a hold of people probably later in October to see if we can set something up maybe for six weeks before Thanksgiving. So I will be working on that. So please let me know if you are interested in that. And tomorrow night is Zoom uh, devotion night. So please, if you can, you will get an email. If you aren't getting our church emails, please message me or, or email me or text me your um, email. I'd appreciate it if you would text me or message me. That would be the easiest way for me to find it. Um, and I will add you to the mailing so you will get that information. So I hope you all are doing well. I'm going to let you go. I know this is short for me, but I know that my iPad is going to die quick. Trish was pretty loud tonight, so I'm not going to go out and try to continue talking with you all. If you have prayer requests, please let me know. Um, uh, we've got birthdays coming up. I'm going to try to do better. Keep the birthday list with me to share birthdays and anniversaries that are coming up. So if anybody's having a birthday, I hope you have a great birthday this week or in the last few days. And again, happy birthday to Janet. I love you like a sister. I wish you a most wonderful, wonderful year ahead. Have a great night. I hope you're doing well. It was great to be with you. Remember, love your neighbor as yourself. Look out for each other. Care for each other. And remember that Jesus is calling us to love each other as he loves us. Have a great night. Take care. Goodbye.